When Islamic State fighters swept into northern Iraq in June, their savagery stunned the world. Outside the city of Tikrit, Islamic State's propaganda machine rejoiced in their mass executions of Iraqi soldiers, uploading graphic videos of the slaughter. They use social media, but whatever the media, I think what's, what's particularly horrific is the message. And the message is, there are no limits. We don't care what you think. We are proud of what we're doing. We will continue to do it until you stop us. Among the hardcore Islamic State killers rounding up police and military in northern Iraq, one stood out. Identified by his lime green sneakers, Abu Zakawi al Australi. He's seen here examining his victim before posting his triumph on Twitter. This jihadist was born and bred in Sydney's western suburbs. His real name is Khaled Sharouf. His vicious brutality from Syria to Iraq has made him the global face of Islamic State's foreign fighters. Khaled Sharouf is the end product of what happened. Here's the end result, and I think where a lot of us uh, have got to try to really focus on is how did he get made that way? How did he end up that way? Uh, it occurred here within Australia, it didn't occur overseas. Just one year earlier, Khalid Sharouf was embroiled in another brutal murder, not in the Middle East, but in Western Sydney. Sharouf's business associate was gunned down at the door of his Earlwood home. This murder was not triggered by religion, but by an apparent blow-up over a debt collection in Sydney's fraud construction industry, where Khaled Sharouf acted as a standover man. He certainly appears to have become involved with some people who were involved in some pretty serious criminal activity, um, and a couple of people, in fact, who were murdered, ultimately. The reality is that um, if he is involved in that milieu, if he's involved in that level of violence, if he's involved with some of these people, I think it casts a great deal of doubt about his serious religious beliefs. I believe that Khalid Sharif was afraid for his life, and that's what made him to decide to leave Australia and use his brother's passport to escape because he was concerned that he will be the next one to be shot. Islamic State's Western recruits like Khalid Sharouf are increasingly found by police and intelligence agencies to have violent criminal records at home. Drawn to Iraq and Syria by the hardcore brutality of IS, they are known as gangster jihadists, even by the young Muslims they try to recruit. I think these people have a fetish for blood. I think they love seeing blood. I think their gangster mentality that they took from the streets, from their old lives of gangs and, and violence and whatever, they've taken it into Syria. They think this is a turf war. Nine years ago, police arrested Khaled Sharouf in what was then the biggest counter-terrorism raids in Australia's history, Operation Pendennis. I think Ben Dennis, by any measure, was a, a watershed moment in Australian law enforcement and the intelligence community. Um, here were people who were seriously intent on causing significant harm to the Australian community, and Sharouf was certainly part of that effort. Tonight we reveal how Khalid Sharouf straddled the paths of radical Islam and street crime in Australia over two troubled decades. When he was first charged with terrorism offences in 2005, he was just 24 years old. By then, he already had a history of drug abuse, mental illness and petty criminality. Available now on iTunes.